I have just passed the 1500 kilometer marker on my ICANN Aero 50 disc wheels, so it's time for a review. Are they crap or are they fabulous? In this video, I will give you my honest opinion. So let's go. First off, let's take a look at the specs. The wheels I have are the ICANN Aero 50 disc wheels and they are the premium model above the Alpha series. The Aero series comes in a range from 35 to 55 millimeters. This is the 50 millimeter version. Starting from the center, we find ICANN's own premium hub, the D01, with a center lock rotor attachment and 12 millimeters standard through axle. And they are available with both Shimano hub and the SRAM XDR hub. From the hubs, 24 Sapim C race spokes are attached. These are premium spokes from a reputable brand, so light and reliable. The spokes reach out to the rim, which is a full carbon tubeless quincher with hooks, not hookless. I'm gonna dig deeper into if that's a good thing or not in a moment. The outer width of the rim is 25 millimeters and the inner width is 18.35 and the recommended tire width is 25 to 30 millimeters. According to ICANN, they weigh in at 645 grams for the front wheel and 785 grams for the rear, so 1430 grams plus minus 20 grams for the pair. However, in my unboxing video, I weighed this particular pair and they weighed in at 1479 grams, so quite a bit above the stated weight and margin of error, but still very impressive on such a deep rim at this price range. The maximum rider weight limit is set to 110 kilos and ICANN gives a two year warranty. That could have been a bit more generous if you ask me. The list price is $845 but ICANN often have different discount drives so keep an eye out. You find them at various retailers online but the easiest way is through their home page. I put a link in the description below. A good thing is that they have warehouses on several continents and that ensures fast shipping and you don't have to pay any extra tax or shipping fees. But are they any good? Let's start with the assembly. I ride a pair of Schwalbe 1 tubeless tires on these and they were pretty handy to get on the rims at first. But when I took the bike on the maiden voyage, I realized that they have not been fitted properly and it felt like I was riding on an endless row of speed bumps. So I got myself some easy fit from Schwalbe and I fitted them properly so they popped into the bead. So now they are nice and round. If this was because of the tire or because of the rim, it's really hard to tell because I have not tried any other tires on them so far. As I mentioned earlier, these rims are tubeless hooked, not hookless, which is a good thing. Hookless wheels are starting to show up on often a little bit more pricey road bike wheels and they are marketed with a vague argument that it's a new technology and that it gives a better impact resistance. But it's actually a cheaper manufacturing process and with a high pressure road tire, the risk of blowing the tire off the rim is tangible. Hence, the hookless wheels have a significantly lower maximum tire pressure than a hooked rim. And they also limit the amount of tires you have to choose between as only a few are approved hookless rims. How about the impact resistance? It makes a big difference on a mountain bike. On a gravel bike, it can make some difference. On a road bike, not so much. Sure, you can build a hookless rim a few grams lighter, but the saving is marginal. I think you see where I'm going with this. Hooked rims is a good thing. One of few weaker characteristics is that they tend to be a bit unstable in crosswinds at high speed. I rode down a steep road at about 65 kilometers an hour with gusts of the wind coming in from the side. I could have paddled harder to gain some speed, but I was not comfortable at that point. In more consistent wind, however, they tend to have a more predictable and consistent behavior. One of the things I was worried about was the hubs. I've ridden cheap, no-name China wheels before, and the one thing giving up first is the bearings in the hubs. At 1500 kilometers, the ICANN hubs are doing great, without noise, resistance, or any other reason to worry. I recently made a poll here on YouTube asking what is more important, a fast bike or a beautiful bike? 59% answered that it's more important with a beautiful bike. These wheels are, in my opinion, very good looking, especially with these nice tan side walls on them. Also considering they are fast, well, I think they're gonna suit many of you out there. 
To conclude, on the downside, the warranty could have been a bit more generous if you ask me. It was a bit tricky to get the tires to pop into place. If that was the tires or the rims, it's hard to say, but I will mention it. They were a bit unstable in the gusts of crosswind at high speed. On the upside, the build quality and feel of them is very good. The low weight, 1430 grams or 1475 grams in my case, is good for a 50 millimeter wheel at this price range. The low listed price, $845 without discounts and no shipping costs. The hooked rims, good thing. The looks, a subjective view, I know, but I think they look great. At low price, you get a set of light, beautiful and fast wheels. At the feel of it, I could not tell the difference between these and a pair of top brand expensive wheels that I've ridden. Do I recommend them? Sure, I do. I don't think you can get any more bang for the buck in this price range of wheels. Now, if you have not seen me paint and build this beautiful bike behind me, you should definitely check out this playlist over here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next DIY bike project. Cheers.